Uh, hi, Pavel Samudi Ramirez, Chief Customer Officer in Appian. Hi, I'm Ramesh Sundaresan. Um, I'm the Divisional CIO at Rider System. Excellent. So thank you, Ramesh, for being uh, here with me today. I'm looking forward to our conversation. And now, uh, why don't we get um, onto it? So um, today, most companies are experiencing difficulties, at least in two main territories. One of them is the economy. You know? uh, high inflation, low growth rates, among other things, are making things difficult for companies. And on the other hand, there is also significant demand for IT skills and low supply. Now, in the context of that background, uh, what do you think are the, are the crucial factors for companies to be able to innovate? Yeah, um, as, a, as a technology leader um, and leaders, we are facing very difficult challenge ahead. Um, as you rightly pointed out, um, high inflation, talent, you know, expensive talent, and, and very less talent out there in the market. Uh, supply chain constraints, to name a few. Um, with, with, with these challenges, we have to enable the business leaders to drive uh, profitable growth. Right, um, that's the that's the challenge. Uh, to do that, uh, as IT leaders, we need to do a couple of things and be mindful of it. Um, number one is spend where it has direct impact on the end customer. Uh, because there's always uh, things that we can do that is indirectly impacting you know the customer, but try try to see what 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 has direct impact to the customer. And number two, invest in the areas that that help the organization to be nimble and adaptive to changing business needs. Let it be uh, from an infrastructure perspective, cloud migration or uh, enabling self service to our business. Um, uh, enabling them with faster processes and simpler and being more agile. Um, invest in some transformation efforts. You know that that would that would make the organization emerge stronger from from a possible economic uh, economic downturn. Right, uh, and then finally talent. Right, uh, how how can we use the talent that we have more effectively? I mean, let it be think outside of the box, part time versus full time. Uh, in-house versus outsourcing, location, uh, let it be work hours, et cetera. I mean, how do we use it more effectively and be aggressive in getting, retaining and retraining, you know, the talent, right? So all these things like are extremely important, like not to, uh, to in, the, in this market. And, and all these things will work only if, um, if we keep the day-to-day -day operations, you know, uh, running well. Uh, because if we are all fighting fires every day, uh, there's people will not have time to innovate, right? Uh, so these are some of the things that uh, uh, that that I think we should be doing as uh, as technology leaders. Absolutely, yeah. I, I like your emphasis on profitable growth. I think today, um, if we see what markets are expecting, stakeholders, I think employees and so forth, is that technology companies take the lead on driving growth, yes, but also delivering uh, at the bottom line. From, from my perspective, I know that we see low code as a critical element to enable profitable growth, among other things, because the use of a platform uh, that allows you to create applications fast uh, and get people trained fast on the technology are key differentiators that can help companies navigate these critical environments. Yeah. Excellent. So let me then um, uh, connect this notion of of uh, innovation and, 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 and competition. You know, many of our companies want to actually leap ahead. You know? the, the dynamics of competition are, are, are such that they require companies to be constantly looking for what is the next way to compete. So what has Ryder accomplished in, this, in these areas using local technology and what impact have you seen in the business? As you pointed out, uh, Pavel, um, disruption is happening at a much, much faster rate, like in every industry. I mean, I'm sure you are facing the same thing, like in, in the industry that you are in. Um, and Rider is no different. We are experiencing the, the same thing. Uh, capability is no longer a question. I mean, uh, can you do it is no longer a question. How fast can you do it? 
right? Um, unlike few years ago, business does not have uh, years to try out an idea and and try out a new product. You know, we, we need something fast, something quick, minimum viable product out the door pretty fast so they can try and fail fast, right? Um, so with that, we we are transforming our way of working, you know, from you know from a waterfall to kind of an agile you know model, uh, because that is that is very critical. Um, transforming the application teams that is centered around technology to product teams where business are, business drives what the teams do. That's that's critical. Um, IT is no longer a black box. You know, you know, it's very transparent to what what we are doing, right? So that's that's the first piece, but. The process is just one piece of the puzzle, right? Um, that's where the low-code platforms come in. Like now, we we, we use platforms like Appian, you know, Salesforce, uh, to achieve the speed to market that the business is expecting, you know, from the from the from the technology teams that that is in our that reports into me. Um, other thing is is it's it's very difficult to kind of think small. Because normally, like now, when we get into a, a, a process reengineering or a project, you know, it's it's like okay, ends up boiling the ocean, right? Like you know, what I've seen is is starting small, uh, limiting what we are doing, getting that out the door, proving it, getting the buy-in, and then we can we can incrementally make you know more and more changes to it and make it make it robust. Um, and IT can come up with a that's a very good idea, but if business is not on board and they are not adapting, that whole innovative idea like now will fail, right? So um, I think that using the new processes um, and thinking small and then evolving from from a minimum viable product and combination with you using a low code platform, I, I I think that that's that's the way that. Um, we can we can I think be successful in this competitive environment. Yeah, yeah, I I, I like your emphasis on on the issue of speed and the interaction between IT and the business, right? Um, I, I am, I am. I talk to customers often and say, look, for me the critical issue is is small, quick steps, and and, and maybe big dreams at the same time. But the critical part is quick steps because that allows you to learn. You said maybe fail quickly, but Certainly, learn quickly, you know? and and um, the connection you make about low code and and agile. You know? my, my take is that when agile was invented, it was with high code, and it was actually a major step forward. But agile today, with low code, is is like a different type of movie. It's a it's a fast, fast, fast paced movie for sure. Where the difference between taking hours. To get back to the business and say, how does this look? Does this connect to the, the business need, as opposed to weeks or months, makes a huge difference. No? So you're right. You're right. The 20, 21st century version of agile is like nothing uh, uh, like what, what, what we, we we saw with high code. No? You, you are right, Paul. Right, the the speed at which the, the, this combination is allowing us to us to move. Uh, I don't know what we could have done without the, those two, right? The, the agile methodology transformation and the low code, no code. Uh, I can't imagine the, the way that we were operating and uh, we would become irrelevant if, you know, if we did not have these new processes and new tools. Nice, yeah, excellent. So, so we've talked about, about, about technology and innovation. Let's talk about the human factor. So. What lessons has a writer learned about change management from a people perspective? Oh, that's a that's a good one, right? Because um, I, I always say there's like between people, process, and technology, uh, the the biggest challenge is with people. Um, you know, technology and process, yeah, there are challenges, but people is where like now where the process and technology breaks. So. Um, I mean, human nature is to resist change, especially like you know when when you don't know what to expect, right? Um, I, I believe that any change that we make, if it is explained in advance, um, what is in it for the the consumer, for the user? I, I think the change would be you know more successful. And I'll I'll give you an example that um, that, that on the business side that Ryder embarked on. Uh, 
we were in the process of modernizing our, our shops, right? And, and, and technology is a small piece of it, right? It, it's an enabler. But the, the process, business process in our shops were completely, you know, re, re-engineered. Um, of course, when you don't explain what your intentions are and when you just say shop modernization, uh, the shops might think that th- there might be a negative impact, right? And there might be resistance to, to that change. But when our business leaders communicated the intent to the technician, which is, hey, the goal is to take the administrative work out of your hands and enable you, the technicians, to do what you are good at, which is repairing the truck. We got all the support that we needed and, uh, and, it, and, and it was successful. So I think you need to communicate why and what is in it for them. Uh, I, I think that's that's that, that's the key. And uh, I mean, I have again in the agile transformation the same thing on the IT side, right? You know, to, to transform a team which has a mindset of technology focused, and you 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 move them into an agile mindset and 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 change the way of thinking if you don't communicate and tell them what is in it in it for them um you know like okay you don't have to juggle multiple priorities there will be one high priority there will not be 20 high priorities right uh, spend will you be spending less time in meetings right so when you tell them what is in it for them i think they will the, the change management i think will be a success and then once you implement the change i think there should be a feedback mechanism right uh, to, so as long as the the consumers and the users and our team hear what is in it for them and then they have the confidence that their voices are heard i think we will have a very successful change management and wherever we have failed to do these two we have struggled yeah yeah i'm with you uh, people is uh, often the most difficult part to change right i i, I remember talking to customers that about this and say, yeah, look, most likely you need to change in significant ways your technology stack. But even if you had a magic wand and that changing immediately, the organization may not be much more efficient, right? If people don't change the way they work, the way they collaborate and agile in the 21st century is a good illustration of that, right? It's like you cannot run agile if the product owner doesn't come and work with the team, right? They have to be able to spend the time and, and, and collaborate in new ways and and that is uh, often the change, but I like your emphasis on, on, on highlighting the benefits for the individuals, the teams, the organization. That sounds great. I, yeah. I have the, the notion that one of the perhaps more compelling components of what new technologies like low code bring into the table is that they will allow technology teams to become a lot more involved in defining a strategy and implementing a strategy. You know? So moving from order takers to co-creators of a strategy is a, change of identity for IT organizations. No? I don't know if you, if you would agree with that. Yes, yes. It, it, it is low-code also enables, uh, Pavel, the, the, um, the, the inner workings between the technology team and the business, right? In, in, the, in the past, business would, it, it's a black box. IT is a black box. Business provides a request and IT does something and then spits out something like that we think like another you know, business needs. Now the business is right there within the agile team, you know, with looking at the product immediately and they don't have to wait for like, you know, months to kind of see it. So, and then they can immediately tweak it. So I think it's, 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 it's helping multiple ways, you know, both on the business side and the IT side. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. Stay. The, the real power of co-creation, business and technology. Excellent. Yeah. Now, many, many, many companies are struggling today um, uh, because of supply chain issues. Now, Ryder being a leader in the commercial truck rentals um, is actually part of the supply chain. But I want to ask you, how have you been affected and what are you doing to manage supply-related, chain supply uh, issues? So uh, before I get to that answer, I, I want to I want to kind of uh, chime in a little bit on 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 the on on rider and the perception of rider in the market. Right? You said rental company. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we did start like you now the truck rental company, and I has a truck rental company in 1933. Next year will be our 90th year, and we are having the best year in 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 history. And not many companies can. Uh, can can say that we de- we touch many products that the consumers have 
uh, and and rely on every day. Um, let it be the coffee that you make, or sp smartphones in your hands, or clothes, or cars you drive, laptop, the desk that you, that you are using today. The chances someone at Rider like not touch touch them. So uh, we are much more, you know, than than a rental company, you know. But we did start as a rental company. So let me um, let me jump into the uh, the question on on the supply chain, like you know, issues. Uh, this post COVID world, you know, it, it continues to drive significant complexity into into the supply chain. You know, le le labor drivers and warehouse workers uh, it is improving but it is still a challenge uh, right and you know, holding on to the talent like what we talked about continues to be a challenge when raw material starts shortages uh, to manufacture electronics or automobiles it's continuing to like now impact supply chains and it's getting better like now uh, but but it's still uh, still a problem the port availability and capacity um, uh, for overseas suppliers, you know, reliability of our overseas suppliers is continuing to be the challenge. Uh, this now economy, which is the new normal, and then combine that with the rising consumer expectation of near immediate delivery um, through e-commerce channels, uh, it, it's 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 a uh, it's 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 again increases the challenges like now that we have. And, and I think for a company like Ryder, that's where I think we fit in very well, right? Um, because we we have that flexibility of our products and uh, and combining them to address the unique needs, you know, of the of the customer. You know, we have you know uh, probably supply chain like you now which uh, provides a comprehensive supply chain solution in warehouses, robotics, and art, advanced automation. Uh, yeah, transportation management, e-commerce fulfillment, and right, and then on the dedicated services, you know, it, it provides our customers with leasing and maintenance capabilities with most professional drivers in the in the in the, in the industry. And then you have fleet management solutions, which are, which my team manages the IT systems for uh, full service leasing, contract maintenance, and 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 uh, as well as commercial truck rentals. Uh, across virtually every industry, right? So I, I think that what positions us well in this in this challenge of challenge we have uh, with supply chain is this: we can mix and match products and provide the optimum solution, like you know, to our to our customer. And and we we are very well aware of you know there are some gaps also, right, in the products that we have, and and we do close some of them with M and A activity, right? So um, and this is in the press, like now you might have seen. Right, a last mile, you know, big and bulky items like exercise equipments and furnitures, um, and rider e-commerce uh, by Whiplash. That's a that's a recent acquisition, and and recently we also acquired uh, Baton, um, uh, which is a logistics platform, and we believe that we will, it will lead uh, the innovation and development of next generation customer facing technologies at Rider. So I think the the diverse nature of our product and the ease at which we can combine those products to res to solve the challenges that our customers have, I, I think that's how I think Rider is uniquely positioned and 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 help the customers to get over the supply chain issues. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to hear you speak about the evolution of the company and how, at the end, you have to manage flexibility. You no know, flexibility on what what assets you use to serve what businesses, right? Um, from, from our perspective, I think that that is actually the challenge for, for many companies is how to better utilize their assets in the globe and how, how to reconfigure as needed. Um, this is one of the reasons, for example, we invested in the creation of an um, uh, uh, extension of our platform to include process mining because we believe that in, the, in addition to helping customers build applications, one one of the key questions is which applications? How do you actually use your assets better? And process mining is a way to, for companies to identify where are the leakages, where are the waste, uh, where is waste, and how can you uh, reduce that to increase the efficiency in which the whole operation uh, works. So, sounds great. And um, so let me move into another territory that I think would be of interest, which is the how do we position projects to, to the companies? How do we 
a pitch to the financial officer. What's your general take about how to present proposals? To the, to, you mean the chief finance officer, right? So to request funding, I, I think that's if I understand your question. So uh, it's always going to be a challenging discussion. Like now when, when, when you are asking for investment, um, especially when the economic conditions, like what we started this discussion, uh, you know, if the economic conditions are, are tight. Um, what has worked for me, uh, again, is, is look through the eyes of your customers, right? Um, you go to the CFO, you explain what the investment means to the end customer and the business. Um, we often in technology, we talk about these cool things, um, which we know will help the business. But when we, when we present it, uh, we talk about the school technology and focus on the technology instead of how this school technology is going to help our customers, right? So I, I think that connection needs to be made. And if the connection is made, I, I'm, I'm sure that you will have the approval from the CFO. Um, second is some of the these initiatives, uh, well, like, you know, they... They, they cannot be directly connected to the customer, right? Um, yes, most of them can, but some of them like not can. For example, um, as, as I pointed out, we are going through this agile transformation, right? And then it needs some funding, right? And and to, to change the technology teams from thinking, you know, technology and applications to products and embed the business in it and, and changing the operating model, right? Um, so how did we convince the CFO? Like, you know, so, we need to highlight you know the speed of delivery and the success and and the and the data behind it and how to reduce the project management waste and showcasing um the it collaboration and the time and the money saved right and and the transparency that the that the business um is is going to get right and and finally finally you know if if you believe if we believe that there is going to be efficiency then we should you know, make the necessary cuts in our budget, right? Um, as to make the CFO's approval like you know, easier. I mean, if, if we believe it, right? We cannot go there and ask, okay, there's going to be efficiency. And by the way, I'm going to keep the same amount of, you know, um, you know budget. Uh, so if we believe strongly, I think we need to, uh, you know, do our part too. So these two things, connecting to the customer uh, wherever possible, uh, looking at it through the eyes of the customer, that has helped me a lot. And then data and 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 showing that you know to the CFO that that has helped. I, I think uh, after all these things, I think consistency is the key, right? Um, it, it, we need to get the trust of the uh, executives and and in this case CFO. End of the day, CFO is going to trust us as, as a technology leaders to do the best for the for the organization. And uh, so. Do what we say we would do, and if there is a miss, explain and tell him how you know we are going to prevent it from happening. Him or her, how to prevent it from happening again, right? Uh, I think with these economic challenges ahead, um, a CFO's job is not going to get any easier, um, and it's going to make our job much more difficult to get approval for these for these investments. So I, I think we need to be in the lockstep, you know, with the with the CFO and help the organization emerge even stronger um, from, a, from a possible you know, economic downturn. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, um, I like your take, Ramesh. I think that this notion of um, investments that help the business keep the focus on the ultimate impact is a great component of, of, of how to present projects. O -o -o often in the past, technology has been Perceived as an ever increasing corporate tax, so to speak, right? It's like, but uh, but now we can connect a lot better. What are the outputs that the projects will deliver, and make sure that we have clarity about that line of sight, and then be ready to to deliver the savings or the improvements and and, and act accordingly, right? How uh, that will help um financial financial officers balance their books, which are under a lot of pressure today. No? Yep. Excellent. So let me let me get to um, I think one last question. Uh, we've talked about technology. We've talked about the interactions between IT and the business, 
and we talked about how to approve um, investment decisions and the sort. What, do you have any any last piece of advice for our, our audience today, Ramesh? I, I think end of the day, like, you know, from a from a technology perspective, our, our uh, technology is is embedded in in every facets of the business now, right? You you take any business business process uh, changes that happens. Um, it is very rare to see that there is no technology component. Um, so it's it's extremely important for us to uh, continue doing what we are good at, which is our uh, our day to day operations. Right? We we can't uh, we can't fail there because if 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 there is fire, like now there is no strategy. Right? That's number one. So stabilize number one. What you what you are doing, doing do well, and you need to enable your team to spend more time on these major strategic initiatives. Um, that's where I think we, we can help contribute more to the business and help the business leaders to achieve, achieve the business goals. For that, we have to free our team from, from day-to-day monotonous work. That's number one. And number two, we need to bring efficiency into the day-to-day operations like what we talked about, agile transformation and low code, uh, using low code platforms so that we can develop things quickly, develop products quickly that will enable our business to um, to meet the challenges that they have in today's market conditions. Yeah, I, I like everything you said. I totally agree. This notion of, of running the business well, but then collaborating with uh, between IT and, and the business to reinvent what is needed and do that at a speed. No? Low code is one way to do that, but certainly aim for a rapid change. No? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yep. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ramesh, for the conversation. It's great to uh, have you here. No, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, it was good talking to you, Pablo. Thank you. Okay.